Hey guys, uh, Jesse Bayer here with Abundant Living Ecuador, uh, coming to you from Loja, Ecuador on Thursday. I think it's the 9th, yes, February 9th, 2017. Beautiful, bright, sunny day today. I'm here at our offices. Wanted to grab a few minutes and make a quick video for you guys about property valuation in Ecuador. This is a tricky one for a lot of people. Uh, when we, you know, we spent a year here looking for land, we uh, certainly, it took us some time to figure out how um, to value property, how to assess, I guess, is what we'd in, uh, use in English more so than value, but um, assess properties here. And um, I want to make a video for you explaining that process, how Ecuadorians look at that, how the market works here for assessing uh, property value. So <clears throat> when you're thinking about property value in Ecuador, you've got to look at it in is two separate entities, uh, urban and rural, city and, and country. Um, in, in population centers and cities, uh, it's much simpler, it's much more clear cut. Um, to come up with a price per square meter for a house or for an apartment, you're looking at several factors, fairly normal factors. Uh, quality of neighborhood, uh, how long ago the place was built, you know, how many years of construction, um, the amen obviously local amenities, you know, those sorts of things. Uh, quality of construction, um, and then most importantly, really uh, level of luxury. So. Um, you know, pretty straightforward, like you'd find really anywhere in the world. Quick caveat to that. It gets a little funny in some parts of Ecuador, not so, not so much in the largest cities like Guayaquil and Quito and to a lesser degree, places like uh, Cuenca and Manta. Um, in some of those cities, it can be more obvious why neighborhoods are considered good or bad, but there are cities in Ecuador, Loja being an example of one, um, where it's a little less clear as to why the locals think this is a great block and that isn't um, because they can look pretty pretty darn similar. Um, so uh, interesting caveat there, but that's really how, how Ecuadorian is going to value um, your, and that's true for lots, price per square meter for lots as well. You're talking location more so than anything. Um, obviously size and how much flat as well. Um, you get, and I'll get into this more in the rural properties, but you get a very steep curve with price per square meter dropping as you get uh, bigger properties. So a smaller lot, your price per square meter is going to be a lot higher than a larger lot. And that gets even more pronounced when you're talking about hectares and big properties, fincas. So that covers uh, rural uh, bef or urban. Before I move on to rural, um, I, I forgot to mention this at the beginning. Uh, Ecuador has no way, to, nowhere, uh, any, no place to view comparables. So there is no database of comparables. You cannot, there's no way to access uh, sales, um, current recent sales with accurate prices and amenities and locations, etc. So there, you, you don't have no way to uh, know the market without knowing the market. Um, so with that said, um, I mean, then that's kind of part of the reason I'm making this video. It's, it is a little tricky um, until you do know the market, unless, you know, you work with somebody like us or, or others who, um, you know, who, who can sort of uh, help you learn the ropes and, and, you know, explain to you why, you know, this is that and that is, that is the other thing. It certainly took us a while to, to sort it out. Anyhow, um, rural property. So as you get it, a rural properties, it becomes more difficult to decipher um, prices. And I should also mention very briefly Prices are kind of all over the map. Um, a lot of times people just kind of ask for the amount of money they'd like to have. Um, and people look at that differently. You, you have people, very traditional people who say, no, like the property, the value of property in this area is this. And that can be a very low number. You have other people who kind of look around and say, you know, well, you know, I sure like a million dollars to, you know, do this other project. I'll put it on the market a million dollars. Um, and there may or may not be really any rhyme or reason to that. So pr prices can be all over the map. There's generally speaking, and then talking in generalities, there's generally speaking um, quite a bit more room to negotiate here than there would be in, in some other markets, certainly uh, where I'm from. And so let's, so let's jump into factors. So you're in a rural area. Here's the thing people look at. I would say number one, first and foremost, flat. Flat land is ver valued uh, much differently uh, than, than um, land that's, that's sloped, although a slope like this kind of slope in Ecuador is considered flat if you're in the mountains, uh, which is most of the country. Um, you know, flat here basically means buildable. So, you know, this would be 
not flat. This would be, you know, but something that's kind of, you know, like on an angle like that, that's basically flat considered here. Obviously, you can certainly have flat, flat, but, um, you know, this would be still value, valuable land for sure. Um, so amount of flat, um, and then I think f from there, the, the second most important would be uh, infrastructure. So is there road access? Is it good road access? Is there electricity on the land? Um, is there water hookups or water on the land? Um, and then, and then I would say the third most important factor um, behind that is uh, the the productivity of the land. Um, again, we're talking rural. Um, the productivity of the land. So, are you in an area where the grass is great for grazing cattle, or are you in an area where you know there's a cash crop that grows um, extremely well, or is there already cultivation? Um, so those three factors are really the biggest when somebody's when an Ecuadorian would is uh, um, is um, assessing the, uh, the value of of uh, rural land, um, and then of course from there you get into other things like um, things that are maybe on the list but way down as far as importance uh, here would be things like you know internet telephone um, <clears throat> is there great views is there water. Um, of course, if there's a house on the land, that gets factored into uh, the value, obviously. Um, and that sort of brings us to an interesting point, which is that as a foreigner, you're very likely going to look at a piece of land and value it differently than the local market would. And that's something you can take advantage of. For example, you know, while some Ecuadorians certainly would love to live by a river and, you know, everybody here recognizes how cool it is to be able to swim in a river and hang out in a river and fish or whatever. Um, lots of Ecuadorians would look at a piece of land with a river and just kind of see, oh, you know, flooding possibilities and those sorts of things. Whereas a foreigner very well, more likely is going to look at that and say, oh, you know, I've always wanted to live by the river, perhaps. Um, views are another thing. So Ecuador, it's not that Ecuadorians aren't into views. Lots of Ecuadorians would love, love a great view. That being said, it's not something that is as important. So as a foreigner, um, um, you know, fruit trees, same thing. If, if the fruit trees are producing and they're making money, then that's something certainly that an Ecuadorian would take into consideration. But a lot of foreigners that are coming here, they really just want fruit trees so they can eat some of the fruit. And, you know, they don't have to wait for them to mature if they plant them when they get here. So those are sort of things that you can look at as um, sort of take advantage of in a certain way as, you know, well, you're not, you know, you might not be, it might not be so important to you um, if you've got a bit, you know, spend a few thousand to fix the road or if you've got to bring electricity in for a few thousand or things like that but you know you might really want the views in the river um, and that you know that's something that you value that here is it doesn't have such a premium on a um, couple things also worth mentioning um, are and this is for both rural uh, well no really more rural properties but you know, Ecuador doesn't have just a ton of there's not a ton of capital and that could change we have elections coming up uh, this month, um, and and if depending on how that goes, there could be a lot of capital coming into the country. But Ecuador doesn't have a ton of capital. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot of disposable income. So um, what the, the situation that that's created, uh, well, and and that's also in tandem with Ecuadorians having sort of a built-in or or somewhat inherent um, and pr and probably healthy uh, distrust of keeping their money in the banks. Um, when the Sucre crashed in 2000, um, Ecuadorians were basically r r robbed um, when, the, uh, when, the, when Ecuador dollarized. So um, people don't love keeping their money in the banks. There's not a whole lot of capital in the country. Um, and what that's done is it's created a um, situation where <clears throat> price per square meter Ha ha goes down so incredibly rapidly as the size of the land gets bigger. Um, and that's partly because of the lack of cash. It's also partly because Ecuadorians don't love keeping lots of money in the bank. They would prefer keeping it in land. So when a guy's got 30 grand and he needs something to do with it, he's, he'll go look, he very often he might go look for a $30,000 lot. Um, that $30,000 lot may be pretty small. So that end of the market, that sort of um, smaller uh, amount of land area um, end of the market is, is pretty strong here. You can really get even high prices, city or, or rural. Whereas the really large fincas, um, people don't necessarily have the cash. There's not that many people. I mean, there's plenty of people with money in Ecuador. I'm just saying there's not that many people 
um, in that in that end of the market who are looking for um, you know larger fincas. So your price per square meter or price per hectare changes um, very rapidly as you get larger, and that's something people coming here to live um, can also do well on as well because. You, know, you can buy a really large piece of land that has what you're looking for, your views, maybe your river, maybe a few fruit trees, maybe a house, maybe not. Um, you know, do all your work, get it set up, maybe chop off a couple of sections and, you know, sell that uh, into the marketplace and, and recoup some of your investment. So that's something people can take advantage of as well. Um, I think that should uh, pretty much cover it. Um, Again, I'm Jesse Bayer with Abundant Living Ecuador. You can reach me at uh, JT Bayer, uh, that's Jason and John, uh, T as in Thomas, Bayer like the aspirin, at abecuador.com. Uh, we have an 800 number from the U.S. and Canada, 888-999-0948. Uh, our website is abecuador.com. Um, you know, we are involved in, uh, obviously we're a real estate company, we do uh, relocation services, and we're quite heavily involved uh, with investing and helping investors uh, managing their, their investments as well. So um, if you'd like to talk to us on any of those, any of those uh, themes, we'd be happy to hear from you, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.